Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Anbiya'i wa al-Mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li yamri Wa ahlu luqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu girls Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Good morning, did you have a good night? Sleep, rest? Yes. 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 And did you reflect? Yes. Uh, yes. I know. Um. I think it was one of the favorite ayahs for Soha last yesterday. The one that yeah. You heard. Yeah. Why was it your favorite one? Um, because particularly that day I wasn't feeling good okay. about myself. I was feeling guilty. You're feeling guilty. So, so yeah. It, it really it just had the right dose of positivity, right? The, yeah the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, we've discussed this before. You know, when we are going through the verses of the Quran and this is the miracle, you are going through something and you hear and you realize like, this is exactly what I wanted to hear. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reaches out to us, okay? And that's the purpose of our seeing and our hearing like we discussed yesterday, that our seeing and hearing is not just to see the blue, blue sky and the green grass. It's to see beyond the blue sky and beyond the green grass, right? So uh, it's to contemplate and ponder and reflect and reason, reason especially about why we are here, where we are, and what the purpose of our existence really is, okay? So inshallah, with that, we will start our today's ayah, Ba'da'a'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem, Wa Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, which is ayah number four. And before I even read it, I just, I just want to announce it, that we, we, when we introduced the surah, we said that this surah has a very calming address, right? It's very peaceful, and it... Um, motivates the believer to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while also encouraging him to remain constantly aware of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every moment of his life, right? This is just that one ayah in the entire surah that talks about punishment, okay? Inna a'tadna lil kafirina. Indeed, we have, Asma, you already look sad. Don't look sad. <laughs> Okay, inna a'tadna lil kafirina. Indeed, we have prepared for the disbeliever, right? Salasila, chains, wa aglal, aglalan, shackles, wa sa'ira, and blazing fire. Okay, so we'll reflect on this ayah like, um, what is this ayah of punishment doing here, right? Um, when we say salasila, which is chains, chains for their feet, aglal, uh, shackles for the neck, and fire that they can be thrown into, right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Inshallah, inshallah, we are not the people from this group. In fact, we are, inshallah, bi'idhnillah, by the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are going to be from the ones who are going to line up to enter Jannah, inshallah. Right? We're going to meet in Jannah, inshallah. Right? And we're gonna have our talks and we're gonna have our meetings and we're gonna have we're gonna be taking strolls down the park in Jannah, inshallah, sitting inshallah. under the trees of Jannah, feeling the breeze of Jannah, inshallah. Right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that tofu to live the life that is most pleasing to him. Now, I'll ask you a question. This ayah is about punishment, right? I don't want to talk about the different kind of punishment that the disbelievers will be subjected to, but I wanna ask you guys one question. Why why okay how would it have been okay if the quran did not have a single ayah that talked about punishment in the hereafter how do you think it would have been like or how do you think we would have taken that well um some people like wouldn't like know like to fear the consequences so they just do whatever without having any idea of like what could happen if they do what could happen thing. okay iman um, there would be no accountability um, on ourselves. We would just do whatever we want, whenever we want. We would just do whatever we want. I feel like, mm -hmm. in a way, if we didn't have punishments, then we wouldn't tell what was bad or good. We would just, if you understand what I'm trying to say. We just go with the flow. Yeah. Like, we do whatever we want to do. Yeah. It basically ties down to that. The common, the commonality in all your responses is if there is no consequence, okay, and if there's no fear of the consequences, then the way we are created, right, we would do just whatever. So let's take a few examples. For example, um, if coming to school, all right, you're not marked tardy. How many of the students, I know you guys will show up on time, 
regardless, always, right? <laughs> but how many, Sadia, why do you look so sad? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> no, oh, it's frozen. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay. Uh, so if, if, if there was no tardy rule, right? And your grades were not getting affected for coming late to class, how, how many students do you think will show up on time? I don't think anybody would even show up. A few. Yeah. Barely. And what if, like, you know, we're doing virtual school right now, right? And we have these certain timings. We have assembly. How many students do you think would show up for assembly just to recite the morning dua? If there, and, and if we had said, you know what, uh, there's no tardy, but it's good for you. We encourage you to come, but there's no tardy policy that is, effect, uh, that is in effect here. How many students do you think will show up for assembly? At Not most, that, hmm? probably 10. Probably 10? Maybe yeah. even, maybe even, no, because the thing is, you're counting our yourself, school's a little right? different. You're, you're counting yourself. Yes. Our school's a little different. <laughs> we have, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, we have very conscious girls in the school. So yeah, yeah I believe that, yes, we would have more than 10. I, I honestly believe that. Oh, much more. But, um, but the the point is that that we're trying to make over here is in order to make sure that we we stay on track right and we do what is required of, of us to do there has to be a, there, there has to be a system where consequences are laid out if there is no consequences and if we're not made aware of that like we said in the beginning we will do whatever right there's not going to be any organization Okay, and we're, ne we're never going to be able to get effective action done. Now, let me take, give, you a, give you an example from outside of classroom. Okay, outside of classroom, you have a scenario where take traffic rules. Okay, traffic rules. Now, if the government or the, the city government, they didn't enforce the traffic, traffic rules and you just drive on the road, however you feel like, right? How many of us will be conscious enough to drive? We know the safe driving speed, right? How many of us will have that consciousness to maintain that safe driving speed I on our own? It, it actually really ties back like a lot that like if, if people don't know the consequence that other people can get harmed, then they don't care. They just literally will not. And even sometimes like, yes, even ahead. now, even when there are traffic rules, Sometimes, like, if you see that, like, there's a police, like, somewhere at the end of the road and people don't see it, you see them, like, all, like, slow down there. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, someone's but, watching. Exactly. It's yeah. the fear of consequences, right? So, uh, you know, Zahira made an excellent point. Asma made an excellent point where uh, she said that uh, it prevents you from hurting others. Is it just others? Yourself. Yourself. Yourself too, right? So, you know, can, can we say, oh my God, like, you know, if I drive on a school zone, then they're going to pay me $300. They're going to fine me $300 for using the phone. That's like insane. It's, an ex it's, it's a huge amount of money. But the severity of not following the safety code in a school zone, the consequence of that is great. Right? So based on how big the consequence is, the fee, the penalty is determined according to that. Does that make sense? In a school zone, if you violate school zone, then the consequence for that is greater than driving in a normal neighborhood. Does that make sense? Right? So same thing over here. You will, you will now ask, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about people, you know, burning and roasting and hellfire and uh, boiling water being given to them to drink or it's poured upon their heads where their brains are roasting basically, right? Why all of that? Because think about the consequence. If we are not able to keep ourselves in check, what is the consequence of that? Eternal suffering eternal suffering so like we have traffic rules and regulations to protect ourselves from ourselves okay it's not just to protect the others yes it is to protect the others and also most importantly to protect ourselves also i could die in a crash right i could be so careless and negligent that i could die in a crash it's to protect me it's for my own safety same thing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he lays out this punishment all right, and he mentions them. He might as well scare us here in dunya than have us experience it over there when there is no turning back.
So again, him mentioning exactly how it is going to be in the hereafter, how the punishment is going to be. I personally, when I reflect on it, I think it's from his mercy and his love for us because he wants to keep us away from it. And fear gets us to move. Okay? Fear gets us to move. It gets us, it gets us up our seat. And we start to take action on our own. We'll just sit there on the couch, watch TV all day. Right? If I don't have the consequence of failing, right? If the consequence of failing is not there, we will not show up to take exams. Right? And if we don't take exams, we're not going to learn. And if we don't learn, we're not going to grow. And if we don't grow, then what? Life is going to be very, very difficult. Life is going to be extremely difficult. So this is from the perspective of this world. Apply that same concept in the perspective of the hereafter. And you'll understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about punishment. And again, it's again from his mercy that, you know, he throws in an ayah where he's talking about punishment, how people are going to be roasted. He immediately calms us down by talking about how believers are going to be. And subhanAllah, we have a couple of ayahs, okay, that's simply going to be describing how we are going to be in Jannah. And inshallah, we'll do that tomorrow. We'll get started with that, how the righteous people are going to be spending their time in Jannah. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from that righteous group. Okay? We'll be drinking together, eating together, having fun together, wearing beautiful inshallah. clothes, looking beautiful, <laughs> nice beautiful hair, the skin, the glow of your skin. Oh, it's going to be like bright. You don't need any L'Oreal or anything at that time. <laughs> It's the noor of your iman that will shine on your face. Okay? So, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to come to another day tomorrow. And we will talk about that. Again, to close, the ayah that we discussed today is ayah number four. Inna a'tadna lil kafirina salasila wa aglalan wa sa'ira. Indeed, we prepared for the disbeliever chains, shackles, and blazing fire. Okay? So inshallah, I will see you guys tomorrow again. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.